My name is the Reverend Sue Ellis, ex-moderator of the Uniting Church. Please join with me in the prayer of remembrance. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we remember with thanksgiving those who made the supreme sacrifice for us in time of war. We pray that the offering of their lives may not have been in vain. May your grace enable us this day to dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom and peace and give us the wisdom and strength to build a better world for the honour and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning all and welcome to our virtual Anzac Day service in Fawn. Most years our area is fortunate to have three commemorations for Anzac Day. The Craddock Dawn Service, hosted by the Craddock Community, their lovely new memorial area. The Hawker Service, the wonderful and still fairly new War Memorial area in Hawker, hosted by the Community Development Board. And the Memorial Service here in Corn, which is hosted for the community by the Flinders Rangers Council. It's fitting that the War Memorials are such significant and prominent features in our towns and such sources of community pride. We are our thanks to those who've worked so passionately and tirelessly on them for us. Anzac Day is a time when we come together as Australians, people who live here in our district and many who are visiting or just passing through to jointly and publicly commemorate the sacrifices of those who have served our nation, who have risked life and limb and in tragic many instances lost their lives or been substantially wounded or harmed. But they went anyway. They went in order to protect those at home and subsequent generations. They went in order to protect the way of life, the values and the freedoms we're so fortunate to be able to take for granted most of the time. On Anzac Day, we don't take them for granted. On Anzac Day, we remember. Traditionally, we join together to somberly and meaningfully share that thanks, that recognition to reflect on our good fortune as Australians and on our debt to those who bought us that good fortune. Today we cannot come together as we normally do, but we can still acknowledge and reflect upon their commitment and service. This year is 105 years since the Gallipoli landing, a day which has so much meaning in our national sense of self and identity. World War I was an indescribably terrible war and just a few short years after our federation as a nation, when our population was below 5 million, Australia sent more than 416,000 men, of whom over 60,000 were killed and more than 156,000 were wounded, gassed or taken prisoner. About one in 12 Australians enlisted and half of those were injured or killed. That has a massive, massive impact on a fledgling nation, bigger than we can possibly comprehend. There's no meaningful context to relate it to today, but it deserves thinking about. They deserve thinking about. This is the 75th anniversary of the World War II armistice. It's 70 years since the Korean War, 55 since Australia's troop commitments to Vietnam, where our troops remained for up to 10 years. There's an unfortunately long and regular series of significant military anniversaries reminding us of the ongoing instability in our world and the need for those who will step forward to protect us and our nation. And that, of course, is what Anzac Day is about. Not the glorification of war or the celebration of battles, but the remembrance and recognition of those who serve and protect all of us and our nation. The more recent actions in Iraq, 30 years ago, in Afghanistan, still happening since 2001, and Iraq again from 2003 to 2009, are often less front of mind when we think of Australia's military engagements, at least for those of us who weren't directly involved or had no family involvement. But they and other peacekeeping missions in places like Timor-Leste, Bougainville, and the Solomon Islands have seen Australian troops serving in the interests of protecting our region from emerging threats and have seen Australian servicemen and women hit into physical danger for our country. 
We have a national responsibility to acknowledge and respect all their service and to reflect on what their sacrifice has won us. I thank all of our returned service men and women and gratefully, gratefully acknowledge their service and their sacrifice and that of their families. We're here today because of what they did for us and we remember. With their hair a little wider, their step not quite so sure, still they march on proudly as they did the year before. Theirs were the hands that saved us. Their courage showed the way. Their lives they laid down for us that we may live today. From Gallipoli's rugged hillsides to the sands of Alamein, on rolling seas and in the skies, those memories will remain of airmen and the sailors of Lone Pine and Suvla Bay. The boys of the Dardanelles are remembered on this day. They fought their way through jungles, their blood soaked desert sands. They still remember comrades who rest in foreign lands. They remember the siege of Old Tobruk the mud of the Kokoda Trail. Some pain and supreme sacrifice with courage that did not fail. To the icy land of Korea, the steamy jungles of Vietnam, and the heroic battle of Cape Young, and the epic victory at Long Tan. Fathers, sons, and brothers, together they fought and died, that we may live in peace together, while at home their mothers cried. When that final bugle calls them to cross that great divide, those comrades will be waiting when they reach the other side. They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Thank you.